What's going on car family? I'm Ben Wayne. Thank you for joining me in another video. So again, as you guys know, the coronavirus has impacted the amount of cars I've been able to review. Um, hopefully I get a hold of a Jeep Wagoneer soon and also looking at returning back to my home turf at Bentley Atlanta to check out the all new Bentley GT Speed. So those are some of the cars we have coming down the pipe, but as you know, it's just really, really hard to get content right now. So I like doing these open discussion videos. A lot of you guys seem to comment on that and weigh in and let me know your thoughts and opinions on some of the cars that have recently come out or cars that are coming out. So I wanna to touch base with you again on the uh, 2022 Mercedes AMG SL. Uh, last we spoke about it, the design hadn't been fully released and it seems like now, as of last week, Mercedes-Benz went ahead and revealed it. So I think it was last Thursday or so. So I really want to know what you guys think about this car. Um, I'll give you my perspective on it, and then I really want you guys to comment and let me know what your thoughts are. So overall, I think this is a great looking vehicle. It looks outstanding. Now, there have been a lot of complaints saying that, well, it looks like an AMG GT or, you know, like a stretched S-Class. Well, if you look at previous generations of the SL, excluding the R231, um, a lot of the design language used in those vehicles looked just like what you saw in the rest of the Mercedes-Benz fleet. So from the front, it's no surprise to me that it looks to share a lot of the design language that we've seen in previous vehicles. Now, I do like its aggressive style, uh, but when it comes to SLs of the past, they kind of had this sporty elegance to it, um, if you will. This new generation seems to be a lot more aggressive um, but it's something I really need to see in person to see if it still maintains that sporty elegance of the previous generations or if it's just all outright aggressive. From the photos, it looks really aggressive, but then there's also been some photos that I've seen where it kind of looks a little bit elegant. So overall, I'm digging the style. Now, from the side profile, um, I will say it looks like a compact car. And that's where we had to be really careful on how we judge cars before we see them in the flesh. Because the reason it looks like a compact car is because the axles have been extended towards the um, outer portions of the overall length of the vehicle. So they've been pushed out. So there's very little overhang from the front and the rear. The SL is actually a large car. It's almost three inches larger than the outgoing generation. These are large cars. They are very long and sometimes they're longer than some of the uh, SUVs or other sedans out on the market. So you really have to wait till you see this car in the flesh to judge the proportions, right? If you look at the car from the rear, um, I think the rear looks really nice. Um, the design is no longer dictated by having to fold a retractable hard top in the back there in the trunk. So the design engineers had free reign on what they wanted this car to look like. So I like how the trunk tapers down uh, reminiscent of the original SL. I think it has a great look to it um, as well. I know there's some heartburn over not having a retractable hardtop, and I understand that. Um, I do like the cloth top, but I do wish that Mercedes offered a separate hardtop, just like they did in every other generation SL before, where it gave you an option of having a glass roof. There's something really elegant about having that option there, um, especially if you're in a colder environment you could throw on that hard top um, that you have sitting in the garage and just ride out and um, enjoy the winter with a glass roof. So there's something definitely to be said about that. I don't know if that's something that will be coming later down the line in terms of a refresh or whatever, but um, I think that's something that I will truly miss. I know other SL owners will definitely miss that as well. Um, you also have the two rear seats. So it's a two plus two configuration. There's been a lot of heartburn about that as well. And I've told you guys previously that um, other SLs in previous generations did have that two plus two configuration. So to say it's new to the SL is not really fair if you wanna be accurate. Um, I think it would have been nice if they gave us an option to have the two plus two configuration or a shelf back there. Um, most people who have this car will not be using those two rear seats. Uh, they'll probably just use it for storage. 
uh, just like you do in this SO. You just use it for storage. There's nothing back there but a shelf. So just have it as storage is nice. Adds a little bit to the practicality, but um, it would have been nice if they just gave me a shelf option back there, in my personal opinion. Now, if you look at the Rolls-Royce Dawn, um, that's a two plus two configuration as well, technically. And they gave you an optional tonneau cover that sits over the back seats and it gives the car this speedster look. It really transforms the overall look of the car. I don't know if that's something Mercedes is gonna be willing to explore in the future, if it's something they considered, but that would really transform the look of this car and just take the design language up to another level. It's already a good looking car, but that would really just take it to another level. Now, speaking about the interior, um, the interior overall looks nice. Um, the one gripe I have, I think that a lot of you have, is the large tablet and the center console. I'll try and wait till I see the car in person to weigh in on that, how I really feel about it. But first impressions, uh, I'm not too keen on that. I'm not really sure how that will age. Um, I get it has the latest tech and it's adjustable and all that stuff. And it looks good for now, but five years from now, what is that gonna look like? There are a lot of cars out there that came out with certain design language years ago that didn't really age all that well um, in present day. So I hope that's not what this is gonna fall victim to, um, but that large tablet is massive. I kinda wish they went with the uh, Bentley GT route where they have a rotating displayer. Some way to cleverly um, incorporate that large tablet into the car's design without it taking over the interior design language. You know what I mean? So that's my thoughts on that. Overall, the interior, I do like um, that chalk gray SL55 that's been in a lot of the press photos. I think that looks awesome, especially with the luxury or I guess the touring interior is what they call it. If I had my pick, I would go with the touring interior. The 63's interior, which looks a little bit more aggressive with the racing seats and everything, that looks cool up front. That looks really cool, but believe me, if you guys have had experience in driving like an AMG GT um, or the four-door GT, those sports seats, they look really nice, but after a little while, you're gonna get tired of them because they're really firm. So it's gonna be interesting to see how those sports seats translate into the SL's platform. Will the car be able to ride so smoothly that the GT or sports seats won't bother you? I don't know. But if I had to choose one, I definitely go with the luxury style seats that are seen in the SL55. Overall, I think the interior looks good. Uh, there are some other minor gripes like the column shifter. Um, I'm not sure what a column shifter is doing in the SL. I think that's something that we may be able to forgive uh, once given some time behind the wheel with the car's handling and the other luxury features. But I do wish that um, they didn't throw a column shifter in there as well. Um, on the door panel, I did see um, in a couple of the videos that there is one large button there, uh, one large plastic button that controls your heated and ventilation options. I think they should have made that individual buttons for a price point of about 100,000 plus. This is probably gonna cost way over 100,000, uh, but for that price point, I think that they could have did better with those buttons on the door panels there. Maybe they'll address that in the refresh, I don't know, but that's just my personal opinion. But overall, I'm not going to lie, I am really excited about this car. I think it's going to look good, especially with um, a lot of the S-Class design language that's been um, incorporated into the car's overall design. Again, wait till you see this car in person uh, before knocking the design language because uh, the pictures with the extended uh, wheelbase and the shortened overhangs, they can easily fool you. When I saw a lot of the spy photos, I'm like, man, this is looking like a compact car. Um, is this really an SL or is it an SLC or SLK? Because it was looking really small. But to find out that it's three inches larger than the outgoing generation, I think that tells you everything you need to know that you need to wait till you see this car in person uh, before you make your final judgment. So other than that, I want you guys to let me know what you think way in the comments section and let me know your thoughts on the design language. Um, are you going to be getting one? Are you ordering one of these cars? If you are, be sure to reach out to my friend Ben's blogger. I'll drop all her information in the description box below. And also let me know what your favorite colors are that are offered on this vehicle. I saw it's available in yellow. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that or not, but I do like that uh, chalk gray. I don't remember the, uh, 
the official name of it. It almost looks like a Nardo gray. Really looks nice on the SL, especially on that SL55 press vehicle they've been showing us. That looks amazing. But overall, that's my thoughts on the car. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Please make sure you're staying safe out there. And also remember to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until next time, I'm Ben Wayne, the automotive reviewer that YouTube deserves. I'll catch you guys in the next one.